Learn these five skills to become like Johann Liebert. Active listening. Many people hear the words when a person speaks, but very few know the intent and meaning behind what a person is saying, which is why it's important to closely listen and analyze the individual. Without actively listening, you miss out on crucial information. Johann's skill to actively listen to others is why he's a master manipulator. It allows him to pick up information on others and use it to manipulate them. To actively listen like Johann, you need to have the objective of gaining information as your primary goal. Give your full attention to the person speaking, when you're listening to the words. Also analyze the tone of voice, body language and emotions they are currently displaying. Revealing how they feel about someone or something when they're speaking. Train yourself to remember key points such as their beliefs, weaknesses and relationships. Every piece of information they give out matters, and could be very useful later on. When you have the skill to actually listen, you will understand individuals at a deeper level. Charisma. It's a skill where you're able to attract people towards you and influence them. The first fundamental in charisma is approachability. Johan is quite approachable due to his friendly manner. You can replicate this by appearing kind, empathetic, considerate, and respectful. This gives people a sense of sincerity and comfort, leading them to be more open towards you and be more susceptible to your influence. Once you develop your approachability, you need to work on your presence to influence others. In order to have an influential presence like Johan, you need to embody confidence, mysteriousness and eloquence. This unique expression makes you an object of intense influence. Many people will simply trust you due to the distinctive powerful character you're displaying. Acting. Acting is where you adopt a certain character and persona to project a particular perception to other people. You see it in movies and TV shows, but this skill is also used in everyday life. Acting can be used to fit in, to hide your flaws, to trick people, or to gain favor of a particular person. Johan has demonstrated his outstanding acting skills, as he can adopt the character of a friendly and innocent girl. He takes the time to dress up to show a convincing female appearance, while also changing his voice to be more feminine, successfully deceiving people with this persona. In order to obtain acting skills like Johan, there's three aspects to consider. Nonverbals. You must pay attention to your nonverbals when interacting with other people. This includes facial expressions, eye contact, posture, body language, and gestures. You can control your own nonverbal cues by simply being aware of it. This means that you can consciously display the suitable nonverbals for certain social situations. For example, if you want to appear likable, you can use open body language, friendly gestures, and genuine smiles. Or perhaps you can choose to have dominant body language to emit confidence. Overall, you want to adapt your nonverbals to the specific perception you want to show to other people. Method acting. This is a technique used to emotionally identify and embody the character you are going to portray. Have a specific character and personality within your mind, then actually think and feel like this character. This requires a high amount of self-mastery, and you must consciously put yourself in the right mood. You do this by imagining how and why you should feel the emotion specifically towards a person or situation. You can also recall from your own experience that cause certain emotions. Then using those emotions to put on a performance, you're basically training yourself to put on the proper emotions on command, just like Johan can. When he puts on a sad expression and shedded some tears, making it seem like he cared about him, it requires a lot of time and effort to put on skillful acting like this. By practicing method acting, you can make your acting seem genuine. Sanely qualities. There's many traits that you can choose to display in your acting. But one of the best appearances to display is being a good person. Simply because it never goes out of fashion, you basically embody what is considered good and positive by most people currently. In modern times, this means appearing open-minded, generous, honest and humble. Even though many of these qualities can be stimulated, people see it as authentic and most of them don't suspect anything. This is why Johan likes to display saintly traits. It's effective in deceiving people into thinking that he's a good person. Brainwashing. This is the skill of making someone reform and adopt different beliefs. It's a great way to manipulate due to its severe form of social influence. In order to brainwash people like Johan, you need to understand the fundamentals. Firstly it requires your target to be isolated and have dependency on someone or something. This is what Johan did when he was manipulating Richard and the orphan. Both were isolated from other people, which created more dependency on Johan, making it easier to influence and manipulate without outside interference. After the isolation, you need to break down their current identity or beliefs. There's a variety of ways to do this, but we'll only be discussing two techniques. Guilt tripping. Making someone feel guilty is an effective method in making someone change their views and beliefs. You mercilessly attack the target for any wrongdoing or sin they've committed, which will put them in the mental state of shame and remorse for the things they've done. The target will feel the need to change their ways or make atonements for their wrongdoings, successfully converting to another set of beliefs. Johann used this technique effectively on Richard by putting his identity in crisis by destroying his moral self-image. 
questioning. With this technique, you ask questions that make them question their own beliefs. It's not necessary for them to provide an answer. The questioning you're doing is for the purpose of making them ponder, poking holes in their own beliefs, and slowly making them see the flaws in what they currently believe. Johan uses this very well on an orphan. The orphan believes he will find his mother, but Johan plants the idea that he might be wrong by asking him questions that the kid can't logically provide an answer to. Questions such as, how will you find your mother when you don't know what she looks like? Did your mother leave because she hated you? Do you think you were wanted? The questioning slowly destroys his beliefs and converts to something different over time. Eventually the orphan realizes that he will never find his mother. Psychopathic calmness. It's possible to improve your calmness to the level of Johan. You just need to understand the irrationality of humans. When under any type of stress or threat, most humans will lose their reasoning powers. This is due to their lack of awareness and mental resilience. To stay calm you must monitor and observe yourself with as much detachment as possible. Examine emotions all the way to their roots. Think about what triggered an emotion. It could be from inferiority, disrespect, envy, or something petty. When you know the root cause, you're less prone to volatile emotions like anger and fear. When you have the awareness to reflect upon your emotions, you can get through stressful situations with extreme levels of calmness. Just like a psychopath, Johann's lack of emotions and high understanding of psychology is what gets him through most situations. Able to kill people with zero remorse and not panicking in dangerous situations. Thanks for watching Vevn7.